Okay, so next let's take a look at using Simpler as a synthesis engine. Um, normally when we think of Simpler, or at least when I would previously think of Simpler, um, basically it would be a tool to allow me to play samples, more or less how they were intended to be played. So um, we're going to go ahead and we've got a Simpler instance here. And we're just going to find some sort of audio content. It doesn't really matter exactly what it is. Um, as you know, audio samples are just a bunch of waveforms played together that your speaker reproduces. Um, and within those much larger waveforms that would overall normally create your you know, sample, um, you can go ahead and pull out like the same tools that your standard uh, subtractive synthesizer uses. So we're going to go ahead and grab, um, here's kind of a cheesy, incredibly, you know, normally you'd be looking at an incredibly, 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 something like that. But what we can do when we zoom way in on these, um, you know, synthesizers basically work on the concept of oscillating a waveform. So you can see here, this is kind of close to a sine wave, not quite because it's a little lopsided. Um, but when we zoom in, we can see like there's all sorts of different weird waveforms that we can capture. And so when we take in the looping, let's go ahead and start the set, set the start somewhere kind of random. We'll pull in the, uh, the ending here and we're going to turn looping on. And watch what happens as we bring in this ending tail. <laughs> Somewhere about here, it stops sounding like an individual sample and starts kind of taking on more of like a synth sound of its own. So, still a little loose, so let's pull it in some more. The frequency that your synthesizer plays its uh, note at, or the pitch that it synth plays its note at is dictated by how many cycles per second or how many hertz uh, this waveform is repeating so as we pull up this loop time it goes up uh, pretty significantly so something that I really like doing is finding just a random place in the wave the form that sounds cool You can some really wild sounds from just messing around with like the start point. Here is kind of almost like a sine square kind of sound or something. There's not a lot of DC offset where it loops. You can see um, the buzziness that you hear from a sawtooth or a square wave comes from the DC offset, which is meaning that it's starting, the start position is not at a zero point. So as the speaker cone tries to recreate uh, this waveform, it doesn't have like a neutral position to start from. It's starting from down here at negative, let's just say 0.7 for the sake of easy math. And then it comes back and then when it hits here, it's at like 0.1 and then is forced to just jump back down to points, negative 0.7, which is what causes that buzziness or the clickiness in a square or a saw wave. So that's why it sounds so growly there. And if we move it over here, more or less, these are starting pretty close to zeros, but there's these cool distortions. Um, so getting a sound like this isn't that easy to get um, from an actual synthesizer. I mean, a sound similar to it would be, but you know, this exact sound, not a chance. Um, and so you can kind of scour through the waveform, finding more items like this that sound cool. Right? So let's go ahead and use this little piece of bass noise here. The first thing we want to do is tune it so that it's 
you know, the correct pitch is when I press C on my keyboard, it's actually playing a C pitch. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and grab an operator. And we're going to record arm both the buzzy synth we're working on here and an operator. So when I play, they both play together. We got to go up a couple octaves here. So here is like an actual C. And here's the note that my synth is currently playing when I press that key. Well, they're out of tune. So we just load these both up to record arm. And we're going to just transpose until we get to the right uh, pitches. So this is an, a time where you kind of need to use your ears a little bit. You might be able to get away with loading up something like uh, the spectral analyzer and um, seeing where the notes are peaking. Um, why don't we go ahead and do that as well? Spectrum, just drop that guy here. Yeah, you can see that right now it's hitting an F when I press this key. So, so that's quite a bit closer now. And you can see in the spectrum, more or less agrees with me. It's pretty close to a C or a C sharp. Um, I can still hear a little bit of uh, phasing going on. Um, there we go. I feel pretty happy with that. Um, so now we've got our little cool sound. and it matches the actual notes on the scale. So um, something else I like to play with is in this volume uh, envelope. That might be nice for certain sounds, but sometimes I like to have kind of more of a, a plinky sound bass with a sharp attack and then kind of cooling down. Let's give it a little bit more release time. Cool. So now we've got a bass to go along with our uh, clinky stuff that was created from a simpler. thing that we can do with this um, and I guess from here I kind of like to throw it into its own instrument group um, you know using these start and stop flags is kind of tricky to use with simpler because it's not a parameter that you can automate however um, using the start loop length and fade parameters here you can automate those so like as we adjust the start sorts of different sounds. Now if we change the length, it's going to change the tuning for our synth. So, you know, because it's changing the number of cycles that it's doing per second. So just keep in mind if you do mess with the length, you'll need to retune it. Same thing with the loop parameter. But these are all cool parameters that you can play with to kind of change the sound. Now, you'll notice that as I move this start position, it changes incredibly drastically, which can be kind of cool, but 
you know, controlling this is tough because, like, there's so many different parameters that it could be at. So what I like to do is send this to a group macro because then I can go into this map mode and say, well, I want this knob from 0 to 100% to actually take me from 0 to, like, I don't know, let's just say 10%. So we have much, much higher resolution. Now, given the shape of your waveform, this may or may not sound super cool. Right now, I feel like it's, you know, because these two parts have really close to zero crossings. Um, so this doesn't have a lot of buzz in it. But the moment I move it, we get a lot of DC offsets, so it's, it doesn't sound as good. You know, maybe if we set this to even a smaller resolution, let's just say 3%. That's just something to play with, you know, it's a way to get different sounds out of your existing sounds. And this is all coming from, you know, a guy saying incredibly or whatever, <laughs> you know, the original um, sample was this. Incredibly. Incredibly. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, of course, you can pick, you know, whatever part of the waveform you want, and, you know, you could just as easily turn it into something synthesizer you've got your typical parameters that you can play with so I hope you may have found some or all of this interesting and exciting and maybe you learned something if so that's pretty cool um, I don't claim to be any, any expert of any of these tools uh, so if you have something to add please do so thanks